This episode was helped brought to you by our newest sponsor, Kelowna Brewing Company. They're a brewery out there in Eastern Iowa. So if you're in the area, make sure to stop by Kelowna and check out their brewery. Great food at the restaurant there, great beer, obviously. If you're in the Midwest, check out any Hy-Vee's. I believe they carry the six packs and they have different types of flavors. So you guys are gonna wanna, you know, definitely try that out. And I think throughout this whole process, Fishing Kid and myself for Beer Fish Fanatics, we're gonna be doing some giveaways here and there. If you guys can go ahead and tag us here and there with your Kelowna beer. So other than that, enjoy the episode, guys. Thank you for joining us at uh, Beer Fish Fanatics. And this episode is actually brought to you by Whisker Seeker Tackle. So make sure you guys go to whiskerseeker.com for all your catfishing gear. Enjoy the episode, guys. everybody welcome to another episode of beer fish fanatics this is grandy with my pop fishing we have kit with the fishing kit youtube channel and it's been a while since uh we've been on site fishing while we record actually I mean, we, we've been trying to do that earlier this year but it's been a little weather wise wind uh heat all that crap it's been kind of hard for us so we finally got opportunity today um I want to go grab Big Girl Brewery. Is that cool with you today? Yeah, I mean, I got Bush Bush Light. I know, I know, some of our fans will like that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm a beer snob today, <laughs> so I had to say no. So I stopped by, grabbed. Uh, it's the Easy Eddie, fresh and juicy, hazy and eel pale. Uh, I like I was telling everybody, I do recommend if you guys gonna get into IPAs. I really recommend getting into the hazy IPAs or the um, what is it? The, uh, uh, what's that light IPA called again? Uh, session. Session. Yeah, yeah session. Try those first before you get into the deep IPAs or the double IPAs, so that way you don't just jump right into uh, the mist of hops. Or you, or you can just get it over with. That's true. That's true. Once, well, like I always say, uh, hopness and bitterness. I always I always compare it with beer. I always compare it to like peppers. Like you can go for the habanero instantly, or you can dabble on a very light jalapeno. So I consider. To me, like a session and a hazy IP is kind of like a jalapeno. Yeah. And then, you know, like our super hot Thai peppers and habanero, I would <laughs> say that's like the double IP or IP. So that's how I compare it. So I don't know if that just helps in but hmm. I don't know. Good analogy? Sure. Good yeah. enough. All right. Uh, so today, just kind of give everybody a heads up. We are trying to catch catfish. Um, struggle to catch bait. <laughs> um, didn't really plan on bait because, uh, well, I thought it was gonna be easy to catch the white bass, but that ain't happening. And we didn't bring a shad net. Nobody brought a shad net. Well, I think the other person thought they were gonna bring a shad net, so, it, so we ended up not bringing a shad yeah. net. And, but luckily we have Bo out of the camera picture. He caught us some bait, or at least one piece of yeah. bait. Bo, Bo's still grinding over there. He's grinding for bait for us right now off camera. Um, but fishing kit myself, we do have a couple pole in the water right now so if we have to cut out we'll cut back in maybe we'll have a fish online hopefully that's that's the case but um yeah i, I just wanted to, to kind of record on site and actually i was just talking to fish here before we jumped on was i don't know if we really ever discussed like our setup and the reasoning behind why we got what we have in regards to catfishing wise we'll, we'll, we'll go with that today um i have you know, whisker seeker rods and they're medium heavy. I think they're six, nine, six foot nine inch rods, uh, medium heavy rods. Seven, six. Is it seven, six? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry, seven, six. Uh, and they, I both have them for the casting wise. So they're not with spinning reels, they're with casting. Uh, some people have actually asked me the reasoning behind why I have that. My reasoning is because fishing kit told me to. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I told him he could do whatever he wants, but he just wanted to copy me. That's all. Not really. I just, I asked him what kind of, what, what, what kind of rod, uh, in regards to strength and all that stuff. So he, he said medium heavy is the way to go. Uh, so I went with that. So why do you got what you got? I mean, you, you could probably explain better to me. I, I don't have the knowledge of the reasoning behind it, but why do you have what you got and what do you have? Um, yeah, I run what, for, well, as far as my catfish setups go, got three, medium heavy casting rods, all with bait casters. 
Well, when you say casting rod, you're gonna put a bait casting reel on it anyway. When you say a spinning rod, you're gonna put a spinning reel on it. But uh, I don't know. The, I just like bait casters. I don't have a hard time casting them. I know some people can't cast them and you know, it's not a thing for them. But uh, well, you just fit more line, like as far as like the spool goes, you fit more on a bait caster. And then I don't, I don't use mono, but I use braid. You could pack a ton of braid onto that bait caster. Same with the spinning. And what the spinning is, if you use mono, the heavier mono you use, the the harder it is to cast. Because when you cast it, it's gonna look like a slinky. So that's that's one reason to go bait caster. But if you're using braid, either one doesn't really matter. And I think another thing with the bait casters is it's kind of like a winch. So you're kind of like winching those fish in, even though. I always try to use the rod to fight the fish instead of just, you know, I always reel down to the fish. So I'll lift up, reel down, lift up, reel down, instead of just holding my rod still, and then just trying to, you know, power the fish in with, with uh, by cranking it. And just uh, the reel down thing. So when we were in Kansas a couple weeks ago out on my kayak, um, I was super excited, you know, I had a monster fish on, you know, on my line, first time ever. And I was so excited, I forgot to reel down like he was saying. And luckily, like I said, even though he was 50, about 50 yards away or whatever, he was like, reel down. Yeah. And and it, it was true, he, he's 1,000 feet. I, I was just cranking it and just reeling it. I wasn't really, I was just too excited. You know, I had to slow down and calm down. Um, but yeah, luckily he was, he was telling me to reel down. Like he was just saying, you just you reel down to the fish and then you just kind of pull it back up and just slowly bring the fish in. Yeah, and use the rod to fight the fish. Makes, it made a difference. Um, and like I said, luckily, hopefully that's something that will help somebody to, you know, to understand when you get that big fish on your line, you know, you're going to be excited. But like he was just saying, use the rod to, to fight the fish and, and just reel down on it. And I think... I mean, I, I really love these rods, um, not just because, you know, they sponsor our, our podcast, but we actually got, I actually, in the fishing kit, got these rods well before we even uh, have were in contact with Whisker Seeker. Yeah, I was using their rods before I even started making videos, so um, I've had them in my arsenal. It's not like they gave me those rods. And, you know, it was, and I really do have to admit, it's really fun fighting um, big fish on these rods. Uh, I don't know. It's just something about it, about the way that, you know the fight is and um, the way the feel is. I, I think it, it feels it's not so stiff because I've I've had some cheaper, older, super heavy duty catfish rods before. It's like just stiff. There's no feel, no play with it. I guess right. I guess, yeah. Is that, is that the, right? The, since these are medium heavy, you know they're not super strong, but they can handle big fish. And they're they're not like a fast action. They're more of a moderate, so they have more of a more of a slow curve versus a like a fast rod is a stiff all the way up, and then near the tip, that's when it bends. But these kind of just curve all the way through. And that's why you know fighting big fish and smaller fish, they do make they do make heavy versions. But I don't know what those fish like. I don't, I don't know if I need a fish with them. Maybe we go saltwater fishing. Yeah. Maybe when you're catching, I don't know, 100, pi 100 pound fish consistently. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But, and they also, like I said, uh, Worcester Seeker also creates, um, they make those for ice fishing with a 38 inch, I believe. Yeah, yeah. 38 inch. 38 inch uh, medium heavy rods. We have that for ice fishing for, for catfish. And I actually brought it out with me uh, last trip. And this guy's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you already have all these rods as your first time out. You're just going to confuse the shit out of yourself. He was probably right. So I actually, I was smart enough to, to put the ice rod away and, and just focus on the two rods I had out. So, um, no. but mm. they do have that. And I, I heard uh, Spencer did say, I think the record, I don't know, it was like 110 pound fish. They caught Somebody caught like 100 pound fish off of those ice rods. Before. I think it was a spoon bill, maybe. Was it? Nice. Maybe. I don't, I don't think it was a catfish. No, but there you go. I mean, you can catch 100 pound fish off those things, right? That's pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. impressive. Right? I don't know the exact number. Yeah, I heard him. I heard something like that. I, I kind of heard him. I think on his podcast or I don't know, one of those videos. Um, 
And then, like Fishing Kit said, the uh, Wister Speaker does make these rods in uh, casting, which we all have. And then also the spinning rod. Do you have a spinning rod or no? They're all casting. I have a spinning ice rod. Okay, yeah, I do too. Uh, but, yeah, I just went with the, the casting one, even though I'm not that great with the bait caster yet. I'm getting better. Um, I have mono on mine right now. Uh, Wister Speaker actually sent us some line to try out, so... I put that on and it's a 60 pound mono I have on my 50 or 60 pound, I forgot. But you know, it works and he's right. I can't put as much as braid obviously on, the, you know, but when I cast it, as you can see, I mean, I'll turn the camera around later, but I can show you guys a picture. It doesn't do what the spinning rod does. Like he was saying, it, it's not a slinky. It's, it's pretty straight, pretty decent. When I casting yeah. it, it's still pretty darn good. So I think that helps casting a mono. Um, I, there, it's not the slinkiness of it, and it actually goes far. I just suck at casting, <laughs> so I'm getting better. It's just one of those things that a lot of people take that for granted, I guess. When you're catfishing, how far you can cast, uh, I'm, I'm still practicing at it. I'm not that good at it, but I watch him, and I watch like Spencer and Denny cast. It's just like easy, peasy. I don't know. Practice, I guess. Experience. Um. And then, what? I think you said you have six, is it 60 pounds, 65 pounds? And then what's your leader? Well, I got right now, oh, carp just jumped like way out of the water. <laughs> uh, right. I, 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 <coughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I got 65 pound braid. Then I have run a, right now I'm doing. Well, on that setup, it's a lighter leader. It's like 17 pounds, you know, channel cats, whatever. But when we we're down catching, targeting those blue cats, I had a 60 pound leader. The reason why I like running a slightly lighter leader is if I need a break off, I'm just going to lose my leader instead of my uh, sinker, my slide, swivel. Then who knows, your line could break. I don't know, like you could lose like 20 yards of your main line. If you uh, run a heavier, heavier leader, and then your 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 main line is gonna break, and who knows, it might break ten yards up, twenty yards up. What would you say is like your biggest? Um, I guess you can say your biggest uh, challenge as a catfisher, shore shore wise. Finding the fish, I guess. Well, finding bait, like today. Well, we weren't prepared. You know, we didn't bring a. We didn't bring a shad net and then we kind of banked on the white bass to be biting pretty good because they have been biting pretty good and they weren't today at least not yet yeah and then other than that you know it's whether it's bait or finding the fish that's about it but there isn't too much more you know there isn't too much more to that for catfishing really i mean as long as you've got decent decent setups it's one of the most relaxing types of fishing I think too. yeah i mean most people think you just sit around and do nothing when you're catfishing just waiting for the fish to bite we're doing that now but it can be pretty active like you could just sit at a spot for a half an hour move half an hour or just camp out oh bowl so hooked up. Got fish on and uh looks like he's getting us more bait which is awesome because we may need that <laughs> yeah oh uh, oh, and, what? and we, uh, we spoke uh, way too uh, soon, uh, 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 and what? we just jinxed them. Dang. So that was that's exactly what happens. Um, <laughs> we really jinxed our friend here. He's catching us more bait, and we are just. Anyways, what was I saying? Oh yeah, catfishing can be pretty active. Bank fishing. How often do you move? Would you say when you're bank fishing, like for catfish? Uh, I'm pretty lazy. I don't move too much unless it's like early in the year that I move a lot because at least during the warmer months, the fish are, you know, moving around. And that way the fish can come to you. They won't always, but like in the colder months, like right after ice out, if you're not on top of the fish, you probably won't catch them. You just gotta keep moving. But once you get on top of them, it could be pretty good. Today is a beautiful day. What is it about? It was mid eighties today. Um, the wind's not too bad, and we're, we're at a spot where, I guess you say the wind's coming to us, kind of right? Right to the left. It's like a crosswind. Crosswind, I guess. And 
Uh, I think, you know, ever since, you know, Kitchen Kid always says it's, it's best to kind of fish as the wind is coming into you because as the wave of the water comes into you, it brings the bait fish and, you know, catfish and eat any any predator, predator fish. They chase the, the, the bait fish and if they're coming, you know, alongside the wind, the winds, right, the waves. Yeah. You know, most likely, hopefully. And that's, yeah. that's if I, the... Uh, if I had to choose, like, a spot, it's whatever the... Wherever the wind's blowing to, that's the spot. So look into... Ooh, ooh. Ooh. I see, I see some stuff busting out there. Yeah, we might have to go out there. We might have to cut this a little bit short and we'll see though. We'll Maybe see. those boats know something because they both came over here. Yeah, they did. So hopefully you know time wise. So yeah, we're, we're at a location where there's, there's a lot of traffic here. Um, hasn't been, I mean, last year wasn't too bad at this location, but I think this year, uh, it's been pretty, pretty good here. I think catch wise, right? It's hit or miss. Yeah. Like today, it's kind of a miss. But like a few weeks ago, it was a hit. Oh, another carp. I'm seeing a lot of carp jumping now. So that's a good sign. I mean, it's, it's active. A lot of fish around here, different types of species. This one thing about central Iowa, I, I think gets underrated. I know a like fishing kid says, we don't have the huge, huge monster size trophy fish uh, on species, but I think we have a variety species right i would say it, we have a good amount of species i think <laughs> i don't think so i mean i think we do i don't like compared to other states we're not that different really true i mean you know if you want to compare it to the states around us there's there's nothing that really stands out in iowa yeah except for our uh no no limit white bass and no limit wipers <laughs> hey, well, you gotta tell others i think anybody that you know cares to know already knows that's true i, th I think uh, that's the biggest reason why we have a lot of out-of-towners out-of-staters i mean yeah. i think it's because of the uh the no limit on white bass and wipers which you know it's it's fine it's just you know i think we have a good abundance of at least white bass for sure i, I, I think we definitely have a good abundance of them so it's good action. It's good. Uh, it's it's great to fish for. He just released the episode on his uh, channel and gets me excited when I see him catch white bass. I don't know. I get excited. White bass are fun. I think so. Overrated, man. Or not overrated. Underrated, I think. I mean, yeah, underrated. You can, you can catch them on top water. You can catch them jigging. You can catch them with spoons. I mean, there's so many, you know, ways to, to go for, for white bass and then when they school up, I mean, it's constant action. Right. I, mean, I don't know what else you want, but. Well, some people just think they're trash, but uh, I don't yeah, know. It, it can be said the same about almost any specific. I species. guess they can be pretty prolific in some bodies of water. Is that bad? Well, it can be bad. Like look at, uh, what was it, Cornelia. It's not white bass up there, but it's yellow bass, and you catch like two hundred of them like this big. That does get annoying, yeah. But I don't, I don't, I haven't seen that with white bass, not in Iowa anyway. They grow pretty good because I think I think there's a good abundance of shad that they can feed off. Well, here, yeah. A lot of the reservoirs here have a good abundance of shad. Yeah. They can they, they help clean up in a way. Yeah, they they uh, take good care of the shad population mm -hmm. so wherever you find a lot of shad odds are you're gonna find tons of white bass oh another thing uh if, you, if you're gonna catfish i do recommend purchasing if, if in your states i don't know and we have a lot of listeners that you know are many many across the nation uh, across the world actually uh but if you have a chance to get multiple lines get that i think it definitely helps i mean obviously it's a numbers game if you can if you can purchase our case here, what is it, like $12 or something for an extra line, two lines? Something like that. Yeah. We get two with our license, and then we, we have the option to buy a third one. Yeah, so, I mean, doesn't hurt. If you have three lines out, I mean, you got three three opportunities to catch a catfish. And then on top of that, in our case, I kind of like that because you're also giving to the DNR. You give them a little bit more funds to work with, and, yeah. and you get an extra line. It's a win-win situation, I think. So, definitely... Uh, 
get that extra line i think it doesn't hurt yeah i might just start even though i don't hunt i might just start buying a hunting license too because that all that, that's like how the dnr gets funding yeah. it's not there's no like extra sales tax from the state that goes to you know wildlife and whatever it's all it's all through licensed sales and then there's a like a well i guess there's like an excise tax on tax on like outdoor stuff so like fishing gear hunting gear but he's right i think we had mark mark on from uh uh catfish or catfish and crappie oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. In illinois they have yeah, the same that's, thing that's where i got it that's where i got it from because he every year he buys a hunting license yeah. even though i don't think he hunts but like you say it all goes to one location and we help them fund and help them take care of our reservoirs our lakes our you know parks and everything so Freaking dog. Oh, He's chasing after them. So, yeah. So, I mean, if you guys want, I mean, you can. Just like you said, just buy, I think they have a combo anyway, so you can get them for a decent price. I think fishing, so. Fishing, hunting license. So, help support the, you know, your DNR, your Department of Natural Resources, whatever they call it, your location. Uh, help support them. I mean, they help clean up your areas where you fish. They help maintain it. They help maintain the uh, fish population. Um, and I'm, you know, like us, I know, like in Iowa, you know, that's the only way they get funded is by license. Yeah. And that's pretty much about it. They don't get paid from the state taxes or anything like that, which a lot of people still didn't know. Yeah. I still get a lot of people that hit us up from our previous podcast and stuff. They're like, wow, we had no idea that the Iowa, DM, they always thought that they're a state entity and they didn't get tax money. And they don't. Just, just a little bit from like the like fishing and hunting gear. I think they get a little bit off of that. But it's probably not that much. Um, yeah, so if you're complaining about like the DNR, oh, the DNR needs to do this, DNR needs to do that. Um, you know, funding, I mean, I don't, I don't know what their budgets are, but you know, funding goes a long way. So if you can, if you can, pitch in a little extra, buy, buy the extra line, buy a hunting, hunting license, yep. even if you don't hunt. It all goes towards the same thing anyways. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'll do that too then next year. I'll definitely do that. Well, actually when my license expires, I'll definitely, ah, I might just buy a hiking license. Who knows, maybe my wife let me go hunting once in a while. We'll see. It's already, it was hard to come out today. I had to kind of say, you know, it's very important. We have you listeners that want to hear us do a podcast. So I had to tell the wife that, you know what? I have to record this with Kit today. Too bad we're not catching fish. We can we can actually talk while we're really in the fish would be nice, but and we'll, we we'll try ice fishing again. We tried it last year, but I think Kit accidentally deleted the footage. Did <laughs> so, I? Yeah. So we we actually did do have a somewhere I don't know. Hopefully he didn't. Maybe he thought he deleted it. So one of these days, if he ever finds it, there's a footage that we actually did an episode while we're on the ice trying to catch fish while he slept overnight. Oh, we didn't catch anything. We didn't catch it. No, we did. We caught a couple bluegills. Oh, yeah. A couple bluegills. Yeah. But it was fun. Oh, that it. guy. Fish on over there. Fish on. Fish on. Yeah, off a boat. I know. I think Kit always has an attraction to boats. If you go watch his channel, guys, because for some reason, well, probably because he catches fish, but he always has an attraction for boats. He always come to... No, they're the attracted to me. <laughs> Oh, bowl. Oh. oh. There we go. We got bait. Boys and girls, finally. And it's a crappie. Crappie. Yeah, so in the state of Iowa, if you catch like a crappie, white bass, bass, whatever, if you catch it on rod and reel, if you can legally harvest the fish, you can use it as bait. So if we caught like a, I don't know, 16 inch bass, we can use that as bait here. Might get frowned upon. On the. The. Uh, by the bass fishermen. The bass crew. Yeah, the bass. Like if you the catfish people are like, yeah, they're like, hell yeah, and use that shit. <laughs> it's true. Use what you can get. That's fresh. Yeah. Always helps. That's what we're trying. But well, right now we're we're not succeeding. I mean we got one white bass for bait. That's okay. Hopefully it works. We'll see. We got like I said, we got a couple lines in. Uh trying for channels most likely this this body of lake right here this body of water um it's got a good abundance of channel catfish so we're hoping we get a couple and then actually this location 
Uh, I think you caught a, a flat flathead, and I actually caught a flathead last week here off a spoon. You were still right. Yep, mine was on a spoon. Yeah, so... There My biggest flathead ever, actually. That was actually really nice, man. Up 20, 30 pounds? 39 inches. 30. That's the only thing, that's for sure. So, okay, so, yeah, listeners, viewers, whoever, I don't know, is there like a, a ratio of inches on catfish? We'll, we'll talk about catfish and other species, whatever, but catfish, is there a typical ratio of how many inches and what's the average weight? Yeah, there's charts. There's gotta be. There's charts, charts out there. Okay, well, I'm too lazy to go look it up, so let me know. What was your 37? 38. Th it was 37, 39. 38. Yeah, 39. 39 inches. So he caught a 39 inch flathead. Uh, estimate, I don't know. I, it looked to me around 25 to 30 pounds. That's what I would say ish. I don't know. Wrong or right? Know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I keep, you know, I tell myself not to bother with the weight because nobody believes you anyway. And especially even if you don't have a picture, yeah, especially if you don't have a picture, but even if you have a picture, like, well, yeah, a lot of times people post on Facebook, like, oh, look at this 20 pounder and the fish is like this long. It's like, well, I don't, I don't know, man. And then they'll be like, nah, your hands are extended or no, you, you it's Photoshop. But people do exaggerate. Yeah. online for right. sure no i i wouldn't say they exaggerate i just think they in their mind when they're looking at it because you know when you see a, a large fish you're like whoa this is huge and you're just like it's it's like a camera a camera what what did they say add 10 pounds to the person i think when you catch a large fish you add five to ten pounds easily yeah because you're you're, you're excited you caught a big fish it's in person you haven't measured it yet and then you look at it it's like wow it's huge yeah, I mean, unless you have a scale, I, I'm guilty of it too. You shouldn't even try to guess how much that fish weighs, <laughs> honestly. Is that what I mean, I mean, I mean so some is. of those people, man, they post a picture like this is 20 pounder, and it's like, it's like my arm, <laughs> like arm, my arm length. <laughs> but he's right because I think I've caught a couple fish, you know. A couple years ago, I was like, man, it's so big. I was like, yeah, that's at least a 10 pounder come to weigh it or just realize it's probably a four to five pound, I guess. Yeah, I remember when I first started catching uh, bigger wipers more consistently. Like the first one I caught in a while, I was like, whoa, it's like a 10 pounder. Put on a scale of like five. That's just shad. But you know who would chase the shad? But they've been flipping all, all day. See, so we're a bunch of. So hopefully that looks like Bo's on. That one looks decent. Looks like, looks like he's on a decent fish. You can bring in here and can, can show the the audience. All right, Bo. Looks pretty decent. Ooh. <laughs> Big drum. <laughs> and then we have Kit. I was wishing for the drum on it's another like, man. Actually, it looks like a bass. Wait, it Wait, is bass? a bass. Yeah, pretty, pretty decent white bass that Bo caught here. Shall we use it for bait? We'll see, or shall we eat it for our fish tacos? <laughs> yeah, eat it. So, so fish that's tacos. Not, that's Bo bait. <laughs> oh, I, I do want to uh, do want to let our audience know. Okay, so if you never eaten um, wipers, because I think there a lot of people are wondering, can you eat wipers? Yes, you can. Oh, here, here you go, Bo. Show, show the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tacos. Dude, that's tacos so you, so all day. Make it look bigger, you gotta put it. There you go. Really close to there That's you a five pounder. Five pounder. <laughs> there you go. It's a, it's a white bass we caught. Nice one, nice one. Um, but as I was saying, I think a lot of people are wondering, can you eat wipers? Yes, you can. A lot of people ask, how good do they taste? Well, I don't think they taste great. They're good. It depends on how you cook it. So we, I cook it, or I have many ways we eat wipers and white bass, depending on the size of the fish size of the one that Bo just caught me, what is that, maybe a pound, pound and a half. I usually just flay those, batter them up, and eat them like fish taco wise. But you should really look up recipes how to eat wipers and large white bass if you if you want to keep, even like a four or five pound wiper. We eat those uh, specifically because the, the Vietnamese culture, my wife is Vietnamese, and they eat it, it's called, uh, you know, fish wrap. And it's a different way. They, they bake it. Uh, they put herbs and all that stuff inside of it. And to me, 
because they we have a sauce that we wrap it up and dip it in and everything delicious but if i were to eat the the wiper just by itself not so good i don't know i'd say throw back the five pound wiper keep a two pounder there you go so wipers are good it just depends on how you eat them and then there's different ways to make them so a lot of people say cut the what is it that the red meat part bleed it out yeah. he also says bleed it out bloodline bloodline blood whatever line. but when we do fish wrap i don't know i don't cut no, none of that meat out we just take the fish wrap it up in um just, what do you call that soft um, it's like a spring roll wrap spring roll wrap thanks uh spring roll wrap we wrap it in those and then we just it's basically a spring roll with fish oh damn bow's on fire yeah. Bo's on fire. Caught another one. He's on another one. Um, but as I was saying, we do. Uh, I think that's a crappie. It's a spring spring roll yeah. wrap. Um, try it out. Look it up. It's just a wrap that we do. That is a that super is delicious. More tacos. White, white bass works really good with that, and, and white bass work really good with that. There's more ways to eat it than just to batter and fry it. By the way, look at this guy. He's on another fish. You want to show them again? Look at this. Dang. Close another close another another five pounder. Another five pound <laughs> crappie. <laughs> No, he got it. He got Oh, there you go. Fishing assault. Yeah, shout out to fishing assault right shout there. Shout out to fishing assault right there. Um, it's, it's, it's getting time right now because right now it's uh, prime time. Yeah, it's that twilight hour. Twilight hour. So I might have to wrap this up, kid. See if I can catch a fish. We don't get. I don't want to get skunked. I, I haven't. I caught a couple bites today. Haven't caught anything yet. Hopefully, I can catch Oh, oh, oh. Out oh, there, dude. Up, so. Dude. They're, they're starting to. They're starting to heat up out there. All right, so we're going to end this soon. We're going to go catch some fish. Um, just let everybody know, listeners, watchers. Uh, I think Fish and Cake myself, I was just talking about before this. We're going to do, you know, the bonus episodes here and there. Bonus episodes, we might do, you know, beer tasting. We might do, you know, product reviews of what we use and what we feel and what we think about them. Um, they're going to be short snippets, and we're just going to release those because a lot of people like that stuff. So we'll... A lot of people like that stuff. We're going to release it for you guys. But. Yeah, I would just say it's just like little stuff that wouldn't hold up an hour podcast. No. But like just little snippets of stuff here and there. Yep. So we'll start doing that. If you guys want more of that, let us know. If there's any specific stuff you guys want us to take a look at, whether review, take a drink of. We're always down to taste new beer. So. All right, we're going to go fish, man, because I got like about 30 to 45 minutes left, guys. Yeah. Um, but stay tuned. I haven't told Fishing Kid yet. I have some guests in line that you guys are gonna wanna listen to. They have a lot of experience with fishing, entertaining, all that good stuff. So stay tuned to us. Make sure you guys subscribe, whether it's on the podcast, on YouTube, like us, don't like us, you don't want. <laughs> Till next time, guys. All right, see you guys.